Welcome to the How I Met Your Mother podcast for the episode entitled Subway Wars. You're not going to use that, are you? This is the fourth episode of the sixth season and the 116th episode of the series. With us today is Chris Harris, executive producer and writer of the episode, and Pamela Fryman, executive producer and director of the episode. I'm Alec Lev, and let's, let's get going. Here's my first question. You are the director of this episode, but you're also the director of almost all of the 117 episodes. Have you directed them all? Who's luckier than me? That's the first <laughs> answer to that question. The second answer is I haven't, uh, I haven't directed quite all of them. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris directed an episode. Our first AD, Michael Shea, directed an episode. And another one of our uh, consulting producers and writers, Rob Greenberg, directed several of the episodes. So I'm way over the 100 mark, uh, <laughs> but I can't take credit for every single moment, although I do when I speak to my family. <laughs> is, this, is that typical for a television series, for one director, essentially, to cover the whole series? If you're talking about a lucky director, yes. Um, I've done this before where I've kind of uh, directed most of the episodes of a series and for me it's great because I have a home you develop a shorthand with the actors it's if you are lucky enough to get this job it's one of the greatest jobs in the world and yeah it's not uncommon um, but I, I can't say that I don't know not probably not that many people have done it not many that sh uh, not many shows run very long um, but I've gotten to do it several times and it's my favorite thing Craig Thomas, uh, one of the co-creators, talked about the beauty of going six seasons that you're able to play with characters in a way that you certainly can't in a movie and you certainly can't in a couple of episodes. I'm curious about the difference for you between directing that first season and this sixth season. Well, you can ask for just about anything from anyone, whether it's actors or you know, set dressing or it doesn't matter. Everybody, we now have this trust that we didn't have before. We certainly know our characters better. We know what our actors like to do, what they're willing to do. I mean, you know, you just, you again, you develop the shorthand. So the first season we were exploring. The first season we really didn't know um, how far we could go. And everybody was a little green. And every time we would be lucky enough to read the next script, they always tested us. They always pushed us a little further. And I think now that we're, you know, over 100 episodes into this, we know that it's all going to be fine. You know, <laughs> we trust, for the most part, <laughs> that, was, that was just for Chris Harris, we trust what, what's written on the page, and we go for it. So now it's just kind of we're on this wild ride. So we're just kind of holding on and seeing what people can come up with. And, and I, should, I should say, because Pamela says about herself, that as lucky as she's been, we've been phenomenally lucky to uh, to have her and she's made like she has made the impossible possible many 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 times and she's made the possible once and <laughs> uh, it's it's just been so wonderful and I realize that often probably I'm guessing there's like lots of gooey everyone's great talk in this so I promise I will say some mean things about other people well, uh, later it, on. It's clear Jason that my Siegel. mother just called Chris Harris right before we started. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Okay. <laughs> but what you're saying actually transitions us lovely into Subway Wars, <gasps> oh. an episode you probably would not have done in season one. <laughs> um, or two or three <laughs> yeah. or six if they had you know, given me a choice, probably. <laughs> um, so, Chris Harris, where did this episode come from? <laughs> oh, yeah. um, uh, uh, a few years ago, Pam slighted me, and I vowed... <laughs> to one day exact my revenge. Oh, and, and did he? Boy, did um, he. This has been a, boy, what a, what a crazy episode. This, uh, every once in a while, a writer is just sort of, sort of just hand in ideas, and this was just something that, you, there are some ideas that we've had floating around for, that take a while for, like take a few years to really gestate and become an episode. Uh, you know, sometimes we think up an idea and write the episode in a few weeks, and then it's on your TV, uh, and then other episodes it takes uh, it, it just have to sit around for a few years before they, they seem right. And this was one of those. Um, I mentioned this idea like years ago and I, on a piece of paper with a few other ideas that will certainly never see the light of day, no matter how many years we go. Yes. And um, uh, I, I, I called it Subway Wars thinking, well, that's a terrible title, but we'll change it. Um, so far we've not. Uh, and uh, the, we, we knew, always knew that uh, we always liked the idea of a big race uh, across 
uh, a spur of the moment for absolutely no reason whatsoever uh, race across Manhattan with everyone taking different uh, modes of transportation and crisscrossing with each other and 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 everything and we we always knew the 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 hijinks of it but we never quite had the uh, why they were racing what the emotional sort of stories were and and this was the year uh, when it actually all we had a little something for everyone it all makes it made sense and uh, uh, so this was the time so it's been sitting around for a while and uh, this was the year uh, we've been talking in all these podcasts about the controlling idea of each episode that you tend to center thematically the, each of the character stories around something we had parental lies we've had various things in this one what would you say it is what is the most difficult thing to shoot <laughs> <laughs> mission accomplished everyone <laughs> um I, I, I think the what we I, hopefully what we're going for is this idea of um, we, you know we have the we have these title cards throughout the episode of why Ted needed a win why Marshall and Lily needed a win and I think I think it was this is just a, a day when everyone's not been doing great where what they all really need to do is just get out and have a crazy adventure and they all find what they're looking for in different ways it really is a day in the life of, of the people on this show. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I, I, I think the the thread is, uh, you know, I, I think that it's it's as broad a theme as that, and and uh, uh, you know, with the backdrop of uh, New York City, or at least a few lots that resemble it. So, to wit, this was shot on the Universal Studios New York New New York Street backlot, and from what I understand, this is the first big production to shoot. If it's not the first, it's certain, certainly one of the first, because I know it, it hasn't been open that long, but it is the most fantastic place to shoot. It is so much fun to walk around. When we went to scout uh, the location before we shot it, it was, it was yeah. like going to Disneyland. I mean, there weren't any crowds, and there wasn't <laughs> any set dressing. So it was kind of like New Yorkers just kind of left. <laughs> uh, like but it was, movie. really, but it was... It was just amazing, and then with the talented people on this show, it just completely came to life. And to be able to shoot on one block and be somewhere, and you know, you're in Midtown, and then you turn around and you're in Wall Street, and you turn around and you're in the Village, and you, you know, it's, it just couldn't have been more fun. And I think because we are so used to shooting in a studio and on a, um, a smaller back lot that we have here at Fox, to have the opportunity to go over there not only was the cast excited, but I know Chris was excited, I was mm -hmm. excited, the crew was excited. It was just, everybody got to experience something really cool at the same time. So we had a wonderful time and it took a couple of long days, but everybody's just so good at what they do on this show that we were, we, we really made the impossible possible. What occurred to me as I was uh, watching the uh, initial table read and then during the shooting of it was, it's almost a silent film. There's very yes. little dialogue yeah. <laughs> in this episode. Um, was that in your mind at all? Writing jokes is hard. <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand. <laughs> um, it, it did. It, it, I don't know if it occurred as as a as a conscious thought, but uh, but uh, it, we definitely realized at some point, especially like in punching up the script, it's like, oh well, this is just a funny physical bit. There's no joke to beat. There's no nothing. I think that all. Hopefully, it'll give it a different feel from our from a, a regular show. There, yeah, there are a lot more um, zany, big physical things. Um, hopefully, people will like that. And we made Jason Siegel run so much. And so <laughs> we did extra takes when we had no need, but it was just so much fun. Uh, everybody, everybody loved doing the physical stuff. It was just, it was a lot of fun. There, there. Well, I don't want to give too much away, but it's not just running. It's you know, they find themselves in. All sorts of interesting. And, and I think also, if, they, if they're listening to this podcast, they've, they've seen, seen, it? seen it. Okay, oh, so we know about all sorts of pedicabs and tackling and each other, and you know. And it felt like that was the way to get. If we were, you know, we're here on the Universal lot for a couple of days. We're we're on a we're on a subway. We're on a cab. It feels like to take advantage of the vastness of of New York. You want to you do want to sort of sort of lean into those big moments um, a little bit because you know I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll be too often when we're... We won't be vi revisiting a, a race across Manhattan again too soon, so... And it was all... I mean, all the stuff outside with the, the, the running and the cab and then 
coming back into the studio and shooting everything at this subway where the platform was moving and the walls were moving it was also thrilling but I think when we got to that last night and they backed a huge bus up into the <laughs> into the <laughs> into the stage I was just like you have got to be kidding me I really that was the moment where I thought where is Chris Harris <laughs> where is Chris Harris but again everybody gets so excited it's just the way this show has been run since the beginning everybody takes ownership and when you look at the camera operators and you say, guys, we got a big bus, they're, you know, just chasing them, you know, each other, trying to get on that bus to be the first ones up there. And our DP, Crystal Fontaine, everybody, everybody just makes it work because it is, it's for a great cause. How I Met Your Mother. What it's, better cause? And what, yeah, it's amazing that it gets done. It's, it's, it's incredible. And, and just... I just was the subway. I just because I found this fascinating. Is that's subway? It's a it's a beautiful set. It's totally fake. It's um, it was on our set. And my favorite part is that the subway stands still and the platform and the wall behind the subway move. I just I just think it's that's kind incredible. of fun. It's crazy. And for someone who's been dizzy before, it was a long day. <laughs> I kept thinking walls were moving. And I understand that that subway was built for Seinfeld. Yes. By or with the help of Susie Greenberg, who was the producer of that show and is the producer of this show. The, the, best, pro the best producer in town. Amazing person who makes impossible things happen. So, Pam, as the director, how early on in the process do you get involved in an episode? I read outlines, I read scripts, but I'm not really living with them like the, the writers are because I'm on stage shooting something else. So, um... I am kind of looking at it from a distance. If I have any questions or you know concerns, I can always voice them. But I'm not into a script until it's Monday morning and we are into a script. And then, then I'm there to offer many hugs. I think I hug a lot. <laughs> and I just kind of keep my arms around this production and make sure that everything is covered and that ultimately the person who wrote the script is getting the performance that they had in their heads when this whole thing started. Um, it's It couldn't be a better working relationship. It's just, you know, everybody's looking to everybody else for their opinions. Do you think this works? Do you think that works? And I think part of that is because we're one of those rare sitcoms that doesn't have an audience. So we're shooting for each other and we're trusting each other and we're seeing what makes the crew laugh and we're seeing what makes you know each other laugh and we're giving ourselves opportunities so that when we get into editing if plan A doesn't work, plan B will work. So um, I think, you know, a, a, a large part of my responsibility, which sounds so idiotic, so I apologize, is to, I want to make sure that all the people that are here want to be here, because if they want to be here, then they're going to do their best work. So it's important to me that we're not only doing good work, but we're enjoying ourselves at the same time, and that everybody feels that they're contributing, and that everybody thinks that they're an important piece of this puzzle, because they are. And I think, in the end, that's really the truth. I mean, and it, it, it's working. Shh. It's working. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but season six, and here we are. And I think a testament to that is from what I could see, when I go on stage from season one to season six, most of the same people. Oh, yeah. Camera oh, yeah. operators, yeah. Uh, catering, yeah, everything. They really cannot stable. get rid of us. It is <laughs> unbelievable. And that'll do it for this week. Thanks so much to our guests. Remember to watch How I Met Your Mother Monday nights on CBS and now in syndication every night. Check your local listings. We're on Facebook at How I Met Your Mother and the Robin Sparkles fan page. And follow us all over Twitter at H-I-M-Y-M underscore CBS. Himyam underscore P-R-O-D, Himyam underscore Writers, and Bros Life, B-R-O-S-L-I-F-E. I'm Alec Lev, and thanks again for listening.